Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the final instalment of my uh, kit bash of Mirage's 135th scale uh, Polish artillery tractor. Um, this short video you may think this is complete but it isn't. I'm sorry to say but this is my first ever shelf queen. Uh, I've lost complete and utter interest in this project. Uh, so many things have gone wrong and I'm very disappointed with my standard of work. Uh, so I've decided to call it a day. However, uh, in this video there are some uh, very good tutorials on how to do the uh, hard edged camo scheme and also how I did uh, all of the pigment work as well. Uh, so please feel free to uh, stick with this uh, video as there are some useful hints and tips along the way. So first thing uh, was to uh, get the uh, model undercoated using uh, Tamiya Red Oxide. Uh, my first big mistake was that I didn't apply the internal masks until everything had been stuck together and it was an absolute pig trying to get those masks on and subsequently there was a little bit of overspray on the inside of the um, windows which you will see uh, later in the video. Um, the actual Tamiya Red Oxide superb covering uh, had no issues at all and will certainly be my uh, go-to uh, primer for, for future projects. So very pleased with uh, how that layer had come out. Next what I had to do is the uh, three part uh, camo scheme. Uh, a bit of a challenge I know, uh, but uh, one that I was looking forward to. Um, what we had to do was to make sure that uh, there was uh, continuity uh, with the pattern uh, to give the full camouflage effect. So that meant using large as well as uh, small shapes. Um, and as you can see here, what you needed to do is to make sure that the, the top levels uh, matched up with the middle layers, uh, again, which matched up with the lower levels. So to give you that uh, continuous camouflage look. And what you also want to avoid is uh, having any uh, areas of uh, the camouflage ending on a, a solid line or a corner. What you want to do is to make sure it actually goes over the, the, the edge or that corner. Now to enable me to do this, um, I used a sheet of glass and added on some wide Tamiya tape and then just penned in some different size shapes, um, some large, some small, uh, just trying to get them of varying shapes uh, to help them uh, interlock uh, further on the process. So using the sharp knife, um, I started cutting out uh, the larger shapes as well as the smaller shapes. Uh, this is quite time consuming, uh, but make sure the, the knife is very sharp and it, uh, the hard work you put in uh, will help out for later on. So the base colour uh, was used um, and that was a good coverage and all you have to do then is just to wait for it to dry fully um, and then it's a matter of using your reference material and start adding on the uh, first uh, layer of uh, camouflage masks. And as you can see here, um, as I said before, get them to go over the edge. Uh, I've done some little ones just to break up the larger areas. And if you plan ahead um, and give it a good, a good amount of thought on where you're going to put those masks, uh, this will pay dividends uh, in the future. So at this stage, everything uh, with the build was going well. So with the mask in place, it was a matter of uh, laying down the second brown colour. And again, just uh, waiting for it to, to dry. Obviously, we're not going to be removing any of the mask at this stage, because uh, obviously what you now want to do is add on the second uh, layer of masking. Now, this was a bit more of a toughie, because um, what you're trying to do is to interlock the shapes uh, with the shapes that you've already done. Uh, because they are similar wavy line shapes um, it wasn't too much of an issue but there was as you can see lots of little off cuts and smaller shapes to try and bind uh, the pattern together uh, to make sure that there wasn't too many very large areas and that there were still uh, some smaller areas there to make it look, look effective uh, but once that was all done uh, and you're pleased with it uh, it's a matter of then just putting down uh, the final coat, uh, which in this case uh, was the uh, pale olive, 
and again just just wait for it to dry um, and then once dry uh, it's a simple matter of uh, taking off all of the masks and uh, I was pleasantly surprised I, I was really pleased with how it all came out um, as you can see here that the bottom level uh, matches up with the, with the middle level um, giving you that continuous uh, camouflage um, stripe and uh, when you see from, from the uh, top as well uh, looking down uh, the top layer uh, bent blends in well uh, with the middle layer as well a little bit of touching up had to be done uh, but not a great deal and uh, obviously the, the the great advantage of this particular camouflage scheme is that it has a solid black line finish um, this was quite easily achieved using a sharpie pen not used it before uh, but because i was going to give it a coat of um, varnish afterwards i was quite happy there wasn't going to be any seepage and as you can see here from this video everything is now complete uh, for the oil work um, all of the fine detail painting has uh, been done um, again no issues here the only real issue is because of all the fine detailing uh, there were many instances of continuing having to re-glue bits on pieces snapping off falling off um, which was rather frustrating um, but as you can see along uh, the bottom there's also been some uh, mud work done as well but all very straightforward um, and this was now ready to be varnished Before any of the oil work could be done, um, I spent a bit of time uh, working on the underneath and this was just a matter of um, putting on using sponge, some dark mud and some light mud and uh, the actual base had already been uh, airbrushed with dark earth. And this would be a very good basis for further work uh, to make the, the underneath a very realistic proposition. As with all my models, uh, I then gave it two coats of Winsor Newton matte varnish and then I made up my own wash using uh, Artist Thinner and you really just need to make it the consistency of, of, of dirty water and then just get yourself a nice brush and just add it to the model uh, making sure that it doesn't pool anywhere and that it is nicely brushed out. But as you can see already it's certainly dulling it all down and making it uh, give that uh, initial dirty look. Uh, next, uh, I'll turn my attention to doing the lower pigment work. Um, I like to mix up my uh, pigments into light, uh, middle shade, and then dark shade uh, colors. So with this particular one, I was running out of my, my mid color. I like to use spot on um, pigments, very, very uh, good pigments. Um, also some uh, AK there and also some Vallejo. Uh, so four different shades um, and just add it different uh, amounts into the pot um, until you uh, get the sort, sort of shade that you particularly want. So in there's uh, smooth pigments, coarse pigments, a whole mixture and then it's just a, a simple matter of uh, getting a, a, a little stir as here I just used the back of my uh, paintbrush and mix that all in and there we have uh, another mid-tone pot of pigments ready to be used on my builds. So when, when applying um, I haven't gone for the dark 
uh, on this particular build I decided to just go straight in with, with the mid-tone and just using a, a bushy brush this is a very old brush that I continually use all the time just apply the um, pigments from about uh, one or two centimeters from the surface um, it was just um, loading up the brush bristles and then just giving the, the, the brush a light tap and then it's a matter of just going along uh, all the way to the end this is quite a messy process so make sure that the area that you're using um, is well covered and as you can see the actual model is laying on a towel uh, to protect it the other side while this process is being done so with the mid-tone um, pigments added it's now time to put it into place using uh, the pigment fixer for MIG um, this is heavy duty stuff um, I have known it to eat through um, glue seams um, so you really must make sure that uh, you have given your uh, model a good coat or two coats of varnish before you do this process to stop any unwanted mishaps and then it's just a matter of uh, using the pipette um, a drop at a time and just let capillary action uh, take over and uh, allow it all to uh, blend in so once that's been done it's just a matter of uh, filling in the patches so go back over again uh, with the pigments and really it's entirely up to you how thick or how light you want to actually uh, make the actual pigment coverage So with that done, uh, with the pigment fixer still being wet, I then added on some light shaded pigments, again made up of three or four different uh, tone um, mixes, um, just to make up the, the, the lighter shade. And again, uh, it's your build, uh, you add it in however much quantity uh, you wish to do. It's just trying to give that transition of, of the darker to, to, to the lighter earth uh, tones as it would be uh, on, on the uh, real thing. So if we just carefully lift this up, as you can see, uh, that's starting to dry out already. And what you now need to do uh, is to do all of the other side, uh, the front, uh, the back, and underneath the uh, fenders uh, themselves and always keep it on a horizontal plane because um, obviously you don't want it, uh, the pigments to be falling off while you're trying to, to, to set them but again uh, quite pleased with how that turned out now just to add a, a little bit of uh, pigment work on the underneath um, we just add some of the fixer to an old um, paint tray and then we just add on some pigment and what the aim here is is, is to make a paste um, and then that can easily be flicked onto the underside um, which will then add a, a little bit of texture uh, before all of the uh, oil work would be done So with that uh, paste-like consistency, it's just a matter of getting yourself uh, your blade 
and just going along and have a bit of fun uh, just keep flicking it uh, where you feel you want your deposits to go again as you can see the model is on top of the towel uh, to protect it from any damage from the hard surface So all together here I use the uh, lighter tones as well as the mid tones and I also used some of the uh, dark tones as well. And there we go, uh, that's quite an effective uh, base uh, and now I just in that means to do the oil work uh, to bring all of that detail back out again. Next what I wanted to do was to add a bit of uh, dust work uh, from the mud up to the underneath of the fenders. So using the uh, lightest combination of pigments again, this time rather than uh, dropping it from a height I'm actually uh, working it in to the surface with the brush. And then using your uh, dirty uh, thinner that you use to clean your brushes, it's just a matter of uh, fixing it in place again with using the uh, blade and splattering the uh, thinner on top of the uh, dust work and creates a, an effective surface and then once dry uh, using warm sepia uh, I started the uh, oil work so here um, just using a, a, a thin wash um, and a, a smaller brush this way the um, oil spreads out through the uh, pigments that have been laid down and then once that's fully dry um, I then use warm sepia uh, to actually do the uh, darker pin wash and the combination is, is quite effective. Uh, the tracks um, similar process um, just um, primed and then given a base coat of dark earth and then adding on the uh, three different uh, mixtures of pigments again the same process it was fixed in uh, with a wash of burnt umber and then once dry um, any uh, residue was taken off but again I, I do like this process it is it is quite effective with the different contrasts of color that are produced before we put the tracks on um, had to make sure that the rear idlers were secure um, so I actually created my own um, fixings because uh, the last thing you want is the rear idlers to come off while you're trying to, to, to fix the tracks on. Uh, the bogies, a uh, little bit fiddly to put together but had no main issues. I just wasn't really happy with, with the rust work that I'd done on that. Um, that would have needed further work if I'd carried on. And when I was putting the bogies on, as you can see, there were small holes at the back for whatever reason I'd completely missed. So I had to go around and plug them all with little uh, white uh, discs and then obviously uh, paint and uh, oil work those uh, back in to match up and also the central um, uh, hole was uh, far too small so that all had to be opened up uh, using uh, drills and as you can see some of the detailing was starting to fall off um, and being lost uh, which was uh, annoying um, so that, that was at the stage uh, where I was now um, Things were starting to snap as you can see one of the wing mirrors is gone the uh, tarpaulin rolls were continually falling off and having to be uh, put back on again um, I wasn't at all happy with the master club uh, tracks uh, they really were poor and it definitely is the last time that I'm going to be using them um, the grills for whatever reason reacted uh, with the um, weathering materials that we're using and started to, to bow Again, bad workmanship for myself. I should have used uh, uh, sheet metal uh, rather than, than plastic for those. Um, as you can see, the tracks didn't fit particularly well. Um, I suppose if I'd uh, had the heart, I could have probably worked around that. 
um, the interior bits were falling off as you can see the filter had fallen off of the engine there and I couldn't, couldn't get access to put that back on again um, again the pigment work was fine uh, the tracks wouldn't fit over the front uh, drive sprockets either I should have done some shading on the uh, different camouflage colours but my heart really wasn't in it by now I did a little bit of dust work um, these lenses here would have had resin put in them uh, to create the, 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 the uh, correct effect so at this point I made the decision uh, to move on um, and what I have did was just added on um, all of the uh, final bits and bobs um, which I had been working on while doing the, the main model just really to, to see what it looked like um, if I had uh, continued to, to the end and there's another example of those slats bowing there so here we are with the final bits uh, put on um, again didn't even think about it but the, the hatch uh, wouldn't open properly uh, that was uh, clashed with the uh, window that was opening so that was bad planning on, on my part um, the top light uh, the wires uh, wouldn't go in uh, correctly and those poles uh, that uh, are on the side there were starting to come away as well um, the tow rope uh, got mangled underneath my chair um, so that broke um, and most of the paintwork came off of it so that all had to be touched up um, again with the uh, open door at the back as well the exhaust went on fine I was happy with that and the highlight for me was the uh, little Tamiya um, basket full of beer so yeah I'm afraid that's in the box now uh, may go back to it one day but uh, at the moment I have no interest in it at all so thanks very much for watching um, I appreciate all your continued support of my work and I will uh, look forward to seeing you all on uh, my next project and uh, many thanks to uh, all my subscribers and supporters I'm very humbled with your support